11 months before Guy makes his record attempt, he's come to the Swiss Alps to take advantage of the last of the winter snow and get his first taste of sledging at speed on the legendary Cresta Run. We've come to the, the home of where sledging started, or tobogganing, tobogganing started. We're going to the Cresta Run. And so it all started here, oh, I don't know, 1864 or something. So was it 1864? The Cresta Run is the world's oldest purpose-built tobogganing track. Named after the hamlet of Cresta, where it's built just above the exclusive ski resort of San Moritz. What do you think of San Moritz? Is it very really posh? San Moritz. Yeah. For a VIP, very important. Place. Ah, yeah, only for VIP. Very expensive. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> As early as 1850, the English upper classes began travelling to the Alps to spend their holidays in the fresh mountain air. And folks, as we know, they, you know, they used to go to, well, they used to go to Scarborough, Landudno and Cleethorpes, I think. They used to go there for the summer holidays. But no, 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 that's where the factory workers went. But the factory owners, all the posh boys, they all used to come to Switzerland for their holidays. They indulged in all manner of healthy winter sports, with much of the activity centred within the magnificent grounds of the Culm Hotel. One, two, three, third along from the left. One, two, three. We're there. We're there. That's us. 1860 now. So it's all right, yeah. Yeah. Goods were brought to hotels on delivery sledges. The competitive British guests requisitioned these sledges and started racing them around town. The Swiss locals got fed up dodging sledges and wanted them off the streets. The enterprising owner of the Colm, Johannes Badrut, had an idea that would solve the problem. Yeah, this is him. He's had a tough paper round, hasn't he? That's Johan, Johan Badrut. He built the world's first purpose-built track for tobogganing in the grounds of the hotel and made it free for his guests to use. Look here, they've got like a bit of um, water and pail round them. Just carrying, um, carrying some water, make it icy so it goes a bit faster. And that's where it all started there. Yeah, I'll start there. As people mastered the sport, they wanted bigger and faster runs. So in 1884, work started on the Cresta Run. The result was a thrilling 10-turn course which ran over three quarters of a mile. The Cresta Run was the fastest place on Earth. Four people have been killed on the Cresta Run. Four people have been killed. Broken every bone on the human body. 28,000 crashes. It might be, I'm sure, I could nearly put money on that it will be 28,001. At least, for the time I've had to go tomorrow. 130 years on, this exclusive tobogganing club has members from around the world, but still appears to be dominated by the English upper classes. And someone who knows the course better than most is Lord Clifton Hugh Lancelot de Verdon Rottersley, a former Winter Olympian and the Cresta's best ever rider. He's an international financier who splits his time between London and St Moritz. He's won so many Cresta run races that he has a dedicated trophy room in his St Moritz home. The night before Guy hits the run himself, Lord Rottersley invites him over to see his trophies and talk sledging. I shit myself every time I go from top. Um, <laughs> every time? Yeah, you have to. Um, if you don't respect her, the run, yeah. um, oh, no, also understand her, she'll yeah. bite your ass. I mean, yeah. she really will. I tend to try and focus my nerves into aggression, um, and I'll do a sort of a berserker at the top. You beat yourself around the face or any of that sort of yep. stuff? Do you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ooh, I'll smack like my it. helmet. WWF um, style, that's the old American wrestling all of that. boys. Them boys all of that. Yeah, all all of like that. that. But then, as soon as you've done the start, you've then got to be relaxed. Most Cresta Run crashes and injuries happen at the infamous Shuttlecock Corner. Ooh, yeah, fighter. <laughs> So that's a pretty quick fall. You just get a little bit winded sometimes. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to you is 35 kilos of sled tumbling about your ears. So what, when, so when that it then is... hits you, that's going to hurt. Right. You're going to pop down tomorrow for a look? I will be down there tomorrow. That's fine. I will be down there. I shall see you down there. I can't wait. <laughs> no. Guy's joining a class of 11 novices from across Europe, who've each paid just over £400 to try their luck. 
and the day starts with a Cresta Run ritual, the notorious death talk. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Welcome to the Cresta Run. The death talk, my word. It was like an Air Force, like a Second World War, the Royal Air Force mission briefing, that's what it was like. This skeleton is of a few members of our committee and shows some of the injuries that you can expect on the Cresta Run. Absolute poker face. This massive pelvic injury happened to Major Kelly and he died on the operating table three times before they managed to save his life. If you are the unlucky one who falls in shuttlecock and breaks your neck, please don't come back whinging because I've warned you now that this is a, a real risk. There was no ifs, buts or maybe everybody knew where they stood, which was good, which is good. So yeah, we got through that. Um, then we got with a guru. First two, uh, rides of the guru is a senior member of the Tobogganing Club who will try and prevent Guy and his classmates from contributing their X-rays to a future death talk. You all look uh, pretty intelligent, so um, prove me, prove me right. All right. It's time for Guy's first run. Right. Put your hand up in the air. Put your hand up in the air. Now step into the run. So it's you in the position. Lie down, balls in the back, back of the seat. So, when the bell goes, feet off the ice, firm raking, steady raking into your round the left-hand corner shuttlecock. Raking is when you, you stick your feet out the back to try and slow you, slow you down. But really, I didn't want to do a lot of raking, really. Right, so off you go. Rake from the bridge. Lee. Rake! With minimal raking, Guy only just makes it past the dangerous shuttlecock corner. Halfway down and still keeping his feet off the ground, Guy flies past the 50 miles per hour mark. And he makes it down in just 64 seconds. I got to the bottom without, yeah, without wrecking myself, so yeah, happy. But Guy's quick time doesn't go down too well with the guru. 64, we're too fast, too fast. So you've got to rake more. 